On today's Pocus Bites review from the Neurocritical Care Society, we will be reviewing TCDs in brain death. We use transcranial Dopplers in diagnosing brain death as an ancillary test if we are unable to perform apnea testing safely. The idea is to identify cerebrocirculatory arrest at the bedside in both the anterior and posterior circulations. How do we define cerebrocirculatory arrest? Well, absence of Doppler signal is not acceptable since up to 20% of the population does not have an adequate transtemporal window due to relative hyperostosis of the skull. Generally, we rely on one of two pathognomonic patterns to be present. The two pathognomonic patterns are small systolic peaks or reverberating or oscillating flow. Small systolic peaks must last less than 200 milliseconds in duration and they must have less than 50 centimeters per second peak systolic velocity without any flow in any direction during the remainder of the cardiac cycle. Reverberating or oscillating flow denotes signals that have both forward and reverse flow during one cardiac cycle. The area under the curve of the forward and reverse flows should be approximately equal, denoting no net forward flow. There is one situation in which absence of any flow signal is adequate for documentation of brain death. If a patient previously had documented signals in the same windows and now does not, that suggests that there is an adequate window and therefore lack of any flow is due to cerebrocirculatory arrest rather than a technical issue. In this case, documentation of confirmatory oscillating flow in the extracranial internal carotids and extracranial vertebrals must be done and documented. If TCDs are being used as an ancillary study for the purposes of declaring brain death, there need to be two separate and full studies done at least 30 minutes apart from each other, and both must meet criteria. The time of death is the time of the second study. There can be very abnormal waveforms that do not meet criteria for cerebrocirculatory arrest, but rather denote worsening intracranial pressure. High resistance waveforms are seen as the intracranial pressure rises and cerebral perfusion pressure drops. Once diastolic flow ceases altogether, since the diastolic pressure is equal to the intracranial pressure, we see presence of large systolic peaks that last for the duration of systole. Triphasic waveforms like the one seen here in the basilar artery can be seen when there is some positive flow during diastole, but a brief reversal of flow at that time. Transcranial Dopplers should not be used to confirm brain death in the presence of an open fontanelle, decompressive craniectomy, or a functioning ventricular drain. In these situations, the ICP may not be able to reach a pressure higher than the systemic blood pressure, so we may not see the pathognomonic waveforms develop. This is a short introduction to transcranial Dopplers in brain death. If you're interested in learning more, check out the Neurocritical Care Society website to learn more about our POCUS webinars.